evening. This is Primetime News. We're coming to you live and direct from our News Fair studios in Colombo. I'm Sonali Wanigabadige. A very good evening. I'm Shane Silva. Let's start off first with a look at tonight's headlines. Sri Lankan Ambassador to Myanmar says that his mission was not informed about the rescued Myanmar nationals in Sri Lankan waters. 26 illegal Sri Lankan migrants arrested in Indonesian waters. Charges to be filed against 13 persons, including parliamentarian Dumida Silva, in connection with the killing of Bartha Lakshman. Court orders for UNP leader Ranil Vikramasinghe and General Secretary Tissatanayaka to appear before courts. And Indian Foreign Minister says that the former Maldivian leader should decide his own future. On to the news in detail. The group of Myanmar's nationals rescued off the east coast of Sri Lanka are still being detained at the holding center in Mirihana. This is because the Myanmar's embassy in Colombo is yet to arrive at a conclusion regarding this group of individuals. On Saturday, the Sri Lanka Navy rescued 32 foreigners from an Australia-bound boat off the eastern coast of Sri Lanka. The foreigners identified themselves as being from a village on the border of Myanmar and Bangladesh, adding that their party had originally consisted of 130 people. They said that the bodies of 98 people who had died of starvation and dehydration en route had been thrown overboard. The stricken vessel was found 240 nautical miles from Point Sangaman and 360 nautical miles off Gaul. After they received basic treatment, the group was brought to the Gaul harbour from where they were taken to the Karapitiya Teaching Hospital for further treatment. Seven of these foreigners are continuing to receive treatment at the Karapitiya Hospital. Seventeen were transferred to the Mirihana Holding Center yesterday after being produced in court. Several others who were hospitalized were transferred to the custody of prison officials. The day before yesterday, seven out of 32, uh, 17 uh, Myanmar uh, people were released from the hospital and uh, we produced them before courts and request from the courts to send them to uh, immigration and uh, immigration safe house at Mirihana for their further uh, actions and uh, uh, courts accepted and also we request from the courts to another 15 were at the uh, Karapitiya hospital to uh, send them to uh, same uh, safe house at uh, Mirihana for further actions and the immigration and immigration controller will take further action and we inform Myanmar uh, embassy for their uh, further actions. Meanwhile, the Sri Lankan ambassador in Myanmar, H.R. Piyasiri, says that the government is prepared to speedily repatriate these people if their citizenship is established. Now, at the moment, we have been not officially informed or intimated to us by neither from Sri Lankan embassy in Myanmar or Sri Lankan government or neither from Sri Lankan India, uh, Myanmar government. So, but as far as I know, this Myanmar government is making arrangements to receive these people at the request of uh, some arrangements there. But my problem is I am not officially informed the pro about this process. But the information I get received is that these people left uh, Myanmar to head uh, into Australia. But they have, uh, in halfway they have had an engine breakdown or something, something happened, they have been drifted to Sri Lanka. This is the information, unofficial information that they have. The rescue of the Myanmarese nationals has drawn widespread coverage in international media. Foreign media reports say that the group of foreigners rescued on Saturday and another group rescued by the Sri Lanka Navy on the 3rd of February are ethnic Rohingyas who are fleeing ethnic conflict in the Rakhine border area between Myanmar and Bangladesh. Foreign media reports say there has been a seaborne exodus of ethnic Rohingyas from the region in Myanmar. 
News first made inquiries from the Controller General of Immigration and Immigration, Chulananda Pereira, on the avenues that are being explored to repatriate the latest group of asylum seekers and the group rescued on the 3rd of February to their home countries. We are Muslim in the Burma, so we are 130 persons and then they take our engine. We are floating on the sea 25 days without eating and without drinking. The Sri Lanka Navy has done a great job uh, and now these people are looked after by Sri Lanka, uh, uh, Sri Lankan government um, until they are sent back to their countries. Um, we have already informed uh, all relevant embassies regarding these people, especially Bangladesh uh, High Commission and uh, Myanmar High Commission. They have to identify the nationality of the people, whether they are Myanmar people or Bangladesh people. So later on, if they, when, they, when, they, when they identify uh, as uh, their citizens, so they have to issue uh, a temporary travel document to go to their uh, country. News first visited the embassy of Myanmar in Colombo to inquire into whether steps have been taken to establish the citizenship of the group who claim to be Myanmarese nationals. But we were not allowed to enter the embassy. Okay, thank you. We came here to get some information regarding the people who were rescued by the Navy. However, our efforts to enter the embassy premises to get more information were futile as we were not allowed to enter the premises. In the meantime, 26 illegal immigrants from Sri Lanka have been arrested by Indonesian authorities. Indonesian media reported that the group was arrested in the seas of the Tidung Islands last evening. According to the Indonesian police, the 26 illegal immigrants were apprehended when the boat they were travelling in suffered damage to its gearbox. The arrested Sri Lankan claimed that the crew had abandoned them at sea after the boat had suffered damages. The boat had been stranded for 12 days in the waters of the Taidung Island. A spokesperson attached to the Indonesian police said that the locals in the area had spotted the boat and informed the authorities. The 26 illegal immigrants consist of 17 males, 4 females and 5 children. Operations are underway to apprehend the skipper and the crew of the vessel. President Mahinda Rajapaksa says that the time has come to develop language skills among all the children in the country. The President made this comment at an event held at Temple Trees today to distribute English language DVDs and teacher handbooks to schools in order to develop the listening and speaking skills of students. The President had pointed out that development of language skills among all children will benefit in building national and religious coexistence among the people to achieve development goals. The President had said further that the benefits of free education could not be reaped to the full because a proper program was not implemented to develop the language skills of students. The program to distribute English language DVDs and handbooks for teachers was launched jointly by the Presidential Task Force and the Ministry of Education. On to a story that made the headlines tonight. Now, the Attorney General has instructed for cases to be filed against 13 suspects, including parliamentarian Duminda Silva, in connection to the killing of Bartha Lakshman Premachandra. Assistant Superintendent of Police of the Criminal Investigations Department, Shani Abesekara, had informed the Colombo Additional Magistrate Prasanna Silva regarding this today. Assistant Superintendent of Police of CID, Shania Besek, will also say that Attorney General Pali De Fernando had decided to free seven suspects who were taken into custody in connection to the killing. Moreover, the magistrate announced that the norm of transferring a case to court number six, once charges have been filed against the suspects, should be followed at this instance as well. Once I mentioned that if justice is meted out on this case, the people will start to have confidence in the law in this country once again. Today is an important junction in the legal profession because this is something that we never expected. Even I did not expect it. I salute the Attorney General. Today we pointed out that Duminda Silva will appear for the case. Apart from that, the case was postponed for another month because the police had not filed the extracts. We are not afraid to face this case. We will prove our innocence. We hope to present him prior to the hearing based on his health condition. Laban 
United National Party parliamentarian Anu Magamage, speaking in Parliament today, charged that individuals are recruited to the foreign service based on political influence. The foreign service has become extremely politicized. Recruitments are made on political influence and as a result our foreign service has been adversely affected. Can you inform this house the basis in which people are appointed to these posts? The experience has been mentioned and we interview according to, uh, we recruit according to the uh, experience and I think they are doing a good job, Honorable Speaker. Uh, anyway, wherever possible, we do improvements and training every year. They continue to work with the government policy. Uh, Ravindra Randani's daughter and Kehli Ramukwala's daughter have been recruited. <laughs> Individuals from the opposition leader's family have also been appointed. Those who have been appointed are talented individuals. There is a representative from every family, hence you don't have to worry. The Colombo District Court today issued summons on leader of the United National Party, Ranil Vikramasinghe, and General Secretary Thisatha Naika to appear before courts on the 5th of next month. The order was made after the court considered six petitions filed by the leader of the Sri Lanka Muslim Congress and five other parliamentarians attached to the party. The petitioners stated that the UNP had written letters to them cancelling their party membership as they did not vote against the recent impeachment motion on Dr. Shirani Bandar Naika. The petitioners further stated that the letters demanded an explanation for this action. They pointed out that though the Muslim Congress contested with the UNP during the last general elections, its members did not join the UNP and therefore the UNP had no right to send such letters. Following the presentation of facts, the court issued a restraining order preventing the UNP from taking any action against the Muslim Congress parliamentarians until the 5th of March. The UNP leader Ranil Vikramasinghe and General Secretary Tissat Naika were ordered to appear in court for the next hearing. The election of the Bar Association of Sri Lanka will take place tomorrow. Speaking to News First, the two main contenders for the position of President expressed the following views. <laughs> Uh, this is the time where a serious threat is being faced by the rule of law and the independence of the judiciary. At this time, the Bar Association of Sri Lanka, including myself, should represent the independence of the judiciary. I request the legal community to think wisely and vote for their preferred candidate tomorrow while also keeping in mind the current situation. We need to protect the independence of the judiciary and the rule of law. I have never engaged in politics. I do not even understand politics. But we can move forward with my program. If the Bar Association is strong, we can protect the rule of law. I will win tomorrow's election.